So we're trying to get pregnant in South Korea of all places, which is the country that has the lowest birth rate in the whole world. So that's an interesting thing. What, what interests you? <laughs> to me, giving birth is such a natural thing in my mind because I've always wanted it. And especially mm. now I want it. Mm. So like being in a country where like it's very obvious going through the system that mm. everyone is like, mm. you got it. Yeah. And like even when you do get pregnant and mm. you do have children, they give you a credit card and they put money into it every single month for you to buy stuff for the baby. In Korea? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but I've already filmed two episodes about pregnancy journey because we've been trying for... We're on the six months of actually trying now. And obviously Jake is half of the equation. So finally we're sitting down for a little Q&A. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The sperm guy. The sp <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. My, my sperm don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, these are questions from Instagram. Mm. Feel free to join the team, guys. The first question is... How did you both realize that you've reached the point when you really want to make a family and have a child? Uh, do you want to start? Yeah, I can start. Because it was about you though, mostly, because, I mean, you know, I was a lady at a point in my life, um, you know, over 30, I, I mean, to me it was kind of natural. Um, I mean, I'm 33 years old mm -hmm. and just naturally thinking about, you know, having a child and um, most of my friends have ch children or a child. Yeah. So it's. I, I think this question kind of directly goes to you. I or, mean, but how did you know back then that you were ready? With you? No, I with ended up with you because I knew that you were the one who I wanted to have a family with. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I mean, mean, for me, yeah. so it was really natural. And I, I remember for the first... I don't know, one or two years of our relationship, I, I, I always had a, you know, at some point, like, we should have a child, and then you know, you're the one who's like, oh, let's enjoy our honeymoon phase a little longer, let's have a talk mm -hmm. first, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And you even, she once even tried to uh, make me go do that thing, uh, try <laughs> my freaking, um, the sperm, what's it called? A the, vasectomy. Yeah, she, oh, that it? freaked me out, <laughs> and then you're the one who was not on this yeah. You know? I mean, to be honest, mm. I wanted him to get a vasectomy a couple of years ago just because Pretty I wasn't... terrified. I <laughs> wasn't exactly <laughs> there Shit. yet. I didn't exactly want to have kids yet. And I am very, very against personally being on birth control. So I did not want to be on that. So I, mm. I was not on that at any time throughout our relationship. And also I was tired of condoms. <laughs> so yeah. I just wanted a way to combat that. And it was probably not the best way to go around that. But thankfully you didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess for me, like I, for me, that was a very clear biological switch. Like I would say around my twenties beginning, because before that I was always like, oh kids, yeah, I'm not really the biggest fan, but I'll probably have them one day until like around my 20s, like start beginning of my 20s, I w was suddenly having a different feeling towards kids and kids in my surroundings, I would be like, oh, instead of like, oh, get away from me, you know? So that's how that changed then. And then little by little, obviously, if you're ready to have kids, like it's very important for, at least for me, that I had the right man <laughs> and like, being with you and the second that we started being really comfortable in our relationship like two years ago like when we really learned how to live together and be together that's when i realized okay yeah I, i'm ready to have kids very soon <laughs> want to read it how many kids do you want um how many kids do you want two two yeah yeah I want two... Two or three. Yeah. yeah, I'm starting to open myself up to three as well. More than one for sure. Yeah. Because I'm an only child myself mm -hmm. and I have... I mean, it's a subjective matter. Um, I, I just see more um, minus than plus um, for being an only child. Yeah. As I got older, actually. I, 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 I freaking enjoyed it when I was little. Everything was mine. As an adult now, I wish I had at least one I don't know, human being who shared the whole life of me with my parents as well. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm very grateful to have siblings as well. Mm. Yeah. What made you feel financially ready to have a baby? You know, honestly, I feel like because the financial aspect of having a baby is really, really big. Like it's it's very important, right? And but Jake and I were both entrepreneurs. Like we we have our own stuff going on, so we have kind of like high risk, high reward jobs. So there is much more risk involved with it. Like one month we can earn zero and the next we can earn a lot and you never really know how to predict it. Um, so it's really hard for us to figure out like when are we feeling ready? I think this question, I kind of want to tweak it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not about being financially ready. It's about being 100% confident in yourself when it comes to a work situation that mm -hmm. And I don't think I'll never be financially ready um, just to um, my goals. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you, 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 you want to obviously do more and more for your kids and family, right? But I think um, there was a point where I started thinking, okay, at this point of my life with what I do, what I have been doing, I don't think I'll ever, um, like... Like suffer mm. it's not about like how much money i earn monthly anymore it's about like okay now like i can comfortably say that um i'm gonna continue making money with what i've been doing because yeah yeah i kind of reached at the point there where um i do better than other people yeah who work in my industry yeah I yeah. try not to say what I do, so... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it's about confidence, though. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and that confidence is especially rooted in like, well, in case we fail in either of our, our like separate industries, mm -hmm. we have the confidence that we can build it up again. So I yeah. think like that's the confidence part. Yeah, I guess so. Even in case you fail, fail it's all, it's gotta be okay because you can build That's it actually up. a good point, yeah. Uh, what what language are you gonna speak with your baby? Well, we already agreed on this. Um, yeah. So when we're all together, we're gonna speak English. Yeah. Um, but we are going to speak separately with babies when we're just one on one. Yeah. Um, me, Korean. Um, you're gonna do Danish, obviously, mm -hmm. so that they can keep up with the three languages. Um, they, just... they gotta be trilingual, yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah. Tough mm. luck, kids. Mm. <laughs> but we're just gonna be funny because that means uh, Jake has some studying to do if he doesn't want to be feel like he's gonna be left out. Yeah, because... I'm gonna feel left out. They're gonna talk shit about me yeah, <laughs> in Danish. <laughs> If I want, yeah, study Danish until, exactly. yeah. Yeah, I don't know what they're gonna say, yeah, but he doesn't tough, know what tough language to learn, though. It is. Yeah, respect you, Danish people. Good yeah. luck. I respect you for having to learn it. There's so many words that are long as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a question a little bit more to me. Mm. This is probably a stupid question, but aren't you afraid of the pregnancy? Or is it just scary for me? I know that a lot like of people, yeah, mm. like going through that and giving birth and the pain and like how yeah. your body is going to change and such. I actually, when I wasn't ready to have kids like many years ago, I was scared about the pro process. Mm. But the second that I decided that I want to have kids now and that I'm ready to do it, mm. there is not a single thing that's scary to me about the process. Other than maybe tearing during birth. Do you know what that is? Like the head comes out of your vagina. Well, it's, you can't really so could get around nice. for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's all. I mean, you can get C-section if. You know, I don't want to get too afraid of it. And well, what's that? Tearing is when when like the baby apart. comes out and the skin. Yeah, that's the yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm maybe a little bit scared about that, but you can like do. I heard you can do all of those like oil massages and such. Yeah, that's Jake's. I'm gonna be supportive for sure, though. I mean, of course you are. You're yeah. going to do the massaging. Yeah, I'm gonna be super supportive. I'm gonna have to do... No, I mean, I'm gonna do what I have to do and everything I can do. Um, yeah. That was really cute. Yeah. I was like joking about the massaging, but you didn't even hesitate saying Yeah, this. of course. I need to yeah, do what I gotta do. It's my baby, too. Mm. Yeah, nice. Thank yeah. you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we got into the topic of something that is also a question mm. here in relation to that. Okay. Um, 
So it says, do you plan on giving birth in Korea? If so, do you have any concerns about the birthing practices here? And we just mentioned C-section and I was very quick to say that like, I do not want a C-section. If possible, I would like to do the birth naturally. The thing that's very, very normal here in Korea for women is like the diso disassociation between what's natural and like what your body is supposed to be able to do and then like what's being told with them and how they're being brought up because in Korea it's I think this is a bit scary each their own but my personal opinion is that it's quite scary that a lot of Korean women here they go and they give birth and they're so scared about the process and they don't trust their bodies to handle it that they schedule a c-section like beforehand in order to them not to be in the process themselves and then they go under full anesthesia not just like like down from the waist but full anesthesia so they don't even experience their birth at all they just wake up with a baby and then the thing is like when they wake up the baby isn't even there because the nurses have taken that into like a like a unit it's kind of like a nursery uh or like a little baby newborn kindergarten oh, you so can add some clip here about some oh, the babies with the baby bed yeah. from Dragon Ball Z <laughs> yeah but it's like I actually find it quite scary because then the, the kid like you can you have to go in and see the kid twice a day after you've given birth you haven't even experienced the birth you just wake up with a hole in your stomach and you go and you visit the baby twice a day for like a long time before you actually get to take the what do you mean hole in your stomach I mean, they're gonna like, section. yeah, but aren't they gonna like, yeah, but you yeah, know, know together, what I mean. Yeah, I'm okay, trying okay, to be okay, dramatic, okay. <laughs> each to their own again. Like, I don't judge if people have like trauma or are so scared that they can't like mentally handle birth, mm. but I just find it scary that it's so normal to do that. Yeah. Like, women do not trust their bodies, and that's a little sad to me. Mm. So, to answer the whole question, yes, I'm actually really like. That's the part of birth that scares me. It's coming into a Korean hospital that's so used to supporting women and not trusting their bodies that I'm scared how it will be for me that really has a lot of trust in my body and want to do it with as little intervention as possible. So for me personally, it's about finding a hospital that's like, that's has the approach of more of a natural birth and thankfully there are a couple of those i've already researched even though i'm not even pregnant <laughs> <laughs> of course you did how did you know that you did that yeah i've, huh. I've looked into i mean a word we can do it in denmark no no because traveling back with a little newborn baby mm, could be a bad yeah anyways our food has been delivered let's mm. uh eat some chintak and continue okay. talking can i be honest with you mm? I kind of lied to you. It's a different place I actually wanted to try. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Looking good. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Would you have FOMO after having a baby so young? So young? I mean, you're not really young. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Probably the person is asking you. Um... <laughs> Jake and I, we have like a eight nine, and a half. Nine year gap, yeah. Yeah. Um, but like this question, it's kind of funny to me because I'm not young to have a child. 25 is not young. It's younger than what the average is now, but the average now is so old that a lot of people are struggling with fertility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just my opinion, but biologically, I'm very prime age. I'm actually almost like, you know, starting to get out of that mm -hmm. too. Mm. And tell them your mom had you when you're, when, when she was your age now. Yeah, true. Mm. I come from a family <laughs> mm. where my mom had me young mm. as well. And I loved it. I do not feel FOMO, especially because people around me also are trying to have kids now. Yeah. All of my closest friends. Yeah. But your close friends are older than you. <laughs> yeah, no, true. Normally, yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You're actually in the middle. Mm. The other question is, how is Jake feeling on this journey? I feel good. Mm. <laughs> you know, only worry we had um, was because it's not happening still. So uh, she got her um, body checked 
for fertility and uh, I just got mine a week ago. Hmm. So, and also I'm the older one here, so I was quite worried what if I had some problems with my sperms and stuff. Hmm. But um, they're super healthy, so. 5% bro! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good to know. <laughs> so, so, what I wanted to say is, you know, nothing's really negative about this journey anymore. Let's just, I don't know. I mean, we're gonna yeah. keep doing what we've been doing. Mm. And it's gonna happen when it has to happen. Yeah. yeah. I truly believe that too. Mm. Like, I got some comments that was worried about Mm. me being stressed in this process mm. and there's not a single part of me that's stressed the thing that I was stressed about earlier was worrying that we weren't at best health but that is that is more to do with our health than it is to do with becoming pregnant mm. um, but I really honestly can say that like this process is just so fun and exciting mm. and that's my main feelings in this but then, like, obviously, the first day of my period, mm. or the, the negative test that you get, the, like, when you try so you get month, disappointed. I mean, because yeah, disappointed, cause you're course. a human, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, like, yeah, of course. And I think it's important to also feel that sadness and disappointment, because mm. it just confirms that this is something that we really, really want. So, yeah, yeah I think it's a mm. beautiful thing, to be honest. Ooh, this is a good question. Mm. Now that you're actively trying to get pregnant, does mm. having sex start to feel like a job? I mean, it becomes a task for sure mm. on that active week. <laughs> it's more like a, you know, you, you put that on your to-do list and you're just gonna cross it off. Um, mm -hmm. And also you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. We are trying to make it romantic unless we're in a hurry and it's like very prime time. Mm. Fertility, then it's like, okay, mm. let's get this going. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes think that mm. is this girl intentionally being not pregnant? So we, <laughs> we, we do this freaking every month. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Something I'm curious about is what Jake is looking forward to and how he thinks about his role in the pregnancy journey, obviously beyond. The getting pregnant part mm. um, before our baby is born. Wishing you guys all the best. Well, I never actually thought of that. Mm. 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 I have thought a lot about that. Yeah, I mean that this is actually the biggest difference between her and I. Yeah. She's more like a planner. She's like she plans literally everything in advance for like next thirty to forty years probably. She's like. Blah blah blah, but I, I, I'm more like a guy. When it comes to actually uh, my um, personal life, mm. I want to do things when it happened. Um, so when I actually have to do it, so yeah. I don't really think of like how it's gonna be in advance. Mm. Mm. And that's the good thing because I am such a planner, mm. and he just goes with the flow. Yeah. Like whatever I need, I always just tell him, and then he does it. Yeah. So. Um, but obviously Jake, he already has a huge role mm. in the house and like in making sure I feel good either way. Mm. And because we're first, we're going to be first time parents, like we have no idea about what we even would need. You know, what I would need. Am I going to have back pain? Am I going to have my feet swell? I don't know. Some people do, some people don't. Like, yeah. do I need, like I would like to have back massages every night, but like... We don't know what we need, so until that time, it's hard yeah. to tell because it's our first time around, right? Yeah, I feel like I just need to, you know, get ready um, to deal with you <laughs> um, more often. <laughs> You're, uh, My hormonal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as long as I'm ready for that, then I think I should be fine. Mm. You've been practicing once a month for the past couple of years, baby. Yeah, but it's good. It's okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can be a little bit crazy when my hormones are going wild. What would you like your child to inherit from you and what from Jake? Yeah, so, yeah, what would you like? From, from you? Mm. Hmm. There's a lot of things I want to inherit from Jake. Mm. I, I want him to inherit all of Jake. Aww, thanks <laughs> really. Mm. But mm. mostly, mostly your perseverance. Mm -hmm. 
and your calmness. Like the calmness is something you learned, but the perseverance, like when you want something, you go for it and you always like achieve it because like you don't see limitations and that's a huge thing that I'm also inspired from you every single day. I want them to have that. You know? And then your handsome looks. Oh, that's nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> now we have to say something really nice back so it makes sense. Fuck it hard. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Your <laughs> beautiful eyes, beautiful nose. And what more? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, your warmness. My warmness. Oh. When it comes to personality, um, yeah, I want them to be as warm as you. Mm. You know how she's literally sweet to every single person I know, and even to animals, and you know. Even the plants we have here. <laughs> so yeah, I want them to be yeah as warm as you. Cause I can be sometimes a cold hearted motherfucker. Like yeah, you know, it's I really sexy. Be... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was really cute. Mm. I feel like we've answered a lot of questions. Mm. Mm. If you have any more. Drop them down in the comments below and I'll see what I can answer there. I usually always answer my comments. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Jake, for, for coming on and joining us on the channel. Can I, would you let me eat? Yeah, yeah I'll <laughs> let you eat. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fighting. Thank you, guys. You see you next week. <laughs> Bye.